Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Thank you for being here today. Um, if you are part of the tens and tens of people that regularly watch this content, I know that you're probably all asking the same question, and it is a fair one, and it is this. Travis, where have you been? It's no secret that I haven't really put out anything in, in several weeks now, and there is a reason for that. Um, several reasons, actually. If you look around, you can see that I don't have a plain gray wall behind me anymore. And that's because I was recording my videos at, at our old church building, um, the building that we had New Heritage Church out of. And now we bought another house. And so I have an office for the first time ever. So that's pretty cool. That's where I'm sitting. So hope you like the look because this is what it'll be like um, hopefully for a long, long time. But we did buy a new house recently. So we closed um, early to mid-December. I don't know. I feel like that was 10 years ago already. But then we had to deal with the whole moving thing, and, and then every, there was a lot of stuff that needed fixed. So we had that going on, but we also, why did it thumbs down me? That was really weird. I don't know if y'all saw that or not. Anyway, I'm shook. I don't know what just happened. Um, did I say something bad? I don't know. I just got derailed. I don't even know what I was talking about. Oh, yeah. So we bought another house, but we kept our old one, too, and so we're in the rental game now which is fun i'm a, I'm a landlord um, for the first time ever but so we've had all that going on and also i got a promotion at work so i've switched departments i'm doing a totally different thing now than i was so had that going on and then we launched the awana program um, at our church at fbc mark tree and so i kind of helped spearhead that and get it off the ground so had a lot going on the past i don't know six eight weeks like i said i can't keep track of it anymore but here we are. I'm hoping the dust is starting to settle a little bit and maybe I can get back, you know, more into a rhythm of where I was. Now, for the video today, I don't I don't have anything groundbreaking, probably nothing new to you if you're halfway familiar with my channel. Um, but for those of you that aren't, for those of you that maybe you're watching me for the first time or just new to this line of thought at all, I want to pose a question to you. And it's one that we need to ask whenever we read the Bible. And the question is simply this, and, and this is an interpretive tool. And the question is, who is you? Who is you? And, and what I mean by that is whenever you read a Bible text and somebody is speaking to somebody else and they say you, what does that mean? Is that me or you? Or is there a context to it? Is one you know, human or divine, I guess, speaker speaking to someone else, to another party? And where I'm going with this is, as, as 21st century Americans, you and I were very accustomed, and, and we've really been trained to think this way, to to think that whoever that you is, it's about me, right? Whatever's going on in that Bible, I'm, I'm. We don't do it on purpose, but we rip the context out and we immediately start applying it to ourselves. Now, does it have application to us? One thousand percent, yes, it does. Praise God, Hallelujah. There are lessons upon lessons in that book for you and me today. But listen, those letters, the, the historical writings, the poetry, all these things, they weren't written directly to me and you. Many of them had recipients um, that they were written to specifically. And so what, what we have to be careful to do is to take those yous and make them about us. And when we do that, we rip the entire text out of its context. So again, I, I ask the question, who is you? And where this is stemming from is every morning, uh, I've got that the YouVersion Bible app, and every morning at 7.15, I receive the verse of the day. And today, it was in James 5, and there was a U in there. And so, I want to read that verse, but really a, a little bit broader than that, um, and show you kind of how this works. So, in James 5, starting in verse 7, this is New King James, we read, Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. Listen to verse 8. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. And then verse 9 says, Do not grumble against one another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. So again, I ask the question there in verse 8. He says, You, who is you? Who is he speaking to? And he actually tells us in verse 7 with the usage of the word brethren. But in James, there is a context. Uh, we're told in James 1 who's writing and who he's writing to. And James 1.1 1, 1 says, James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. Now, let's ask the question. Do those 12 tribes that existed in the time of Jesus and the apostles, do they exist today? And the answer is no. No, they don't. The 12 tribes, they lost their genealogical records with the destruction of the temple. They're gone. Nobody knows what tribe they're from. If they tell you they do, that's simply false. And so we need to ask the question then, back to verse 8, who is you? Well, it's these 12 tribes, the, the dispersion, right? He's talking to them. And you say, well, Travis, I don't get it. Why does that matter? Well, here's why it matters. Because we read that like it's about us. We say, okay, we need to be patient. We need to establish our hearts because the coming of the Lord is at hand. Um, the judge is standing at the door, right? That's the way we've been taught to read this. But folks, that's not correct. The judge was standing at the door in their day. Uh, his, the coming of the Lord was at hand in their day. And that's why James is telling them, those first century believers, that they needed to be patient. James was telling them that it was near in their day, not ours. And whenever you understand that the you is not you and me, but you actually read it through the lens of a human writer, human recipient, there's a context, um, and then you mesh that with the rest of the New Testament, or really in the Old Testament too, examining all these timing indicators and all these other things, um, these prophetic you know, predictions and events and so forth. And what you begin to see is, is that all these things that maybe didn't really make a lot of sense they begin to click and mesh together perfectly. So again, nothing groundbreaking there. I know that. But nonetheless, when we see these U's, just begin to do that. If you're doing a daily Bible reading plan or something like that, I don't know if y'all heard that. My daughter just came running by. I think she's wearing Cinderella slippers. Um, but anyway, if you're doing a Bible reading plan, when you notice those words, you, especially in your New Testament, ask the question, is that about me or is that written to somebody? Was Paul writing to Timothy? Was Paul writing to Titus? And so on and so forth. And what you'll begin to see is that it changes the way that you interpret the Bible. And hopefully in a way that makes a lot more sense to you. So a uh, quick video today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with me. Uh, I'm over 700 subscribers. I think it's like 715 uh, as of today. So I just want to say that's super cool. And I appreciate it. Uh, many of you, you know, you comment, some of you email, you message, and I just really appreciate um, the ongoing support. Don't forget, uh, I don't know if you guys, yeah, I think we talked about it in my, in the interview with Jordan Grant, but uh, I'm speaking at Brian Conference in Virginia. So uh, if you don't have anything going on in April, come on out for that. And then, of course, here in my backyard, Jonesboro, Arkansas, in this August, we're having the Arkansas Eschatology Conference. Going to be um, Gary DeMar, Mike Sullivan, Bob Crookshank, uh, Don Preston, and David B. Curtis. That's right. So hope you guys can make it out for that. I look forward to meeting. I know a lot of y'all have already bought tickets that, that watch this stuff. And so really looking forward to meeting y'all. It's going to be fun. But I'm going to get off here. Till next time, thanks for watching. See you.